Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over the max heap data structure. The reason I decided to select this one is because I feel like online there is it there aren't many resources that actually explain what it is, and those that are on YouTube explain it very poorly. They either throw a bunch of code at you and you have no idea what you're looking at, or they don't really explain the theory, or people just post videos that they don't even talk, they just type code expecting you to understand something you have no idea, uh, no idea about. And so I'm going to actually be going over it with you here um, to explain what it is. And I hope you guys find this useful. Uh, okay, so a max heap kind of replicates a binary search tree, only that a binary search tree has nodes represented in their own class, like a struct. So you might have like a node and it'll have, you know, left child, right child, etc. cetera. Um, but when it comes to a max heap, its nodes are actually represented as elements on a vector. So you might have a vector, this is, you know, element or index uh, zero, uh, index one, index two, index three, index four, index five, index six. And a traditional binary search tree would look like this. Now abstracting it into the vector of the max heap, we will have a vector that the first element is some random number, we don't care. Now given that this is a max heap, we are going to have the largest number here. So we are going to have a 100 here. We are then going to have this 100's left child right beside it. And it's the 100's right child right beside that. We're then going in this position, we're going to have the left child's left child. So we're going to have 60. We're also going to have the left child's right child, 65. Now we're going to have the right child's left child here, 90. And if the right child had a right child, he'd be here in index seven, or in, in index eight, um, element seven of the vector. So he'd be, I don't know, let's say he was 90, uh, this isn't really correct because it's, it's not really a, uh, a, a max heap, but um, 94, no, that's okay. We'd have a 94 there. All right, so now that we understand what exactly a max heap is, it's a vector representation, the way I like to think about it of a binary search tree, we can go about actually creating it. So how do we actually create a max heap? Well, let's start with our class. Now, like I said, it contains a vector, but it also contains the count of the amount of items it has. And that count will start at zero, hence brace initialization. We're also going to have a vector of integers. Let's call it vect. And like I said, the first element needs to be some random number that we're never going to touch. Let's put it negative one. Awesome. Now, what you also need to understand is that it has there's three private helper functions. Um, there is a function that gets the parent given an index. So given the given a index in this vector, give us its parent node. And I'll explain that in just a second. So what that does is it finds the position of the parent, which will be half that of the child. So I'll explain that in a second. Let me just type out that here. All right, so what's the parent of 75? 75 is in position two, and two divided by two will give us his parent, which is 100 at position one, right? Let's look at 95, the right child, three, Divided by two is 1.5. Now this is integer division, so we're gonna get a one. Hence, parent is at index one, correct. Now let's look at the parent of 60. We have to bit shift over one to the right, which is the same as dividing by two. 60 is at position four. Four divided by two is two. And look at that, it's parent 75 is at position two. So that's how we find the parent. We also use the same logic to find the left child and the right child, only that the bit shifting is a little different. Here, we shift one to the left, which is the same thing as taking i and multiplying it by two. This parent, just, I'm just gonna write it out for, for clarity. Here, we're taking the int i, and here, uh, 
taking the index of a of a any uh, I guess you can call it node in this vector, we can now find its right child. So for example, we take one. How do we find its right child? Well, we bit shift over one, the number one, which gives us two. Bit shifting over left is once is the same as multiplying by two, and then we add one. So the that means that the position of the right child should be three. One times two, which is two, plus one, three. Three is ninety-five. Hey, look, the right child of hundred is ninety-five. Correct. Times two plus one. Awesome. So now that we have these private helper functions, we can look at the, I think it's around four public functions that we have. So the first thing we always want to know with any data structure is if it's empty. So let's have it is empty, takes nothing, returns const, and we can actually return that here in line. So if the size is zero, then it's empty. Okay, that should be quite straightforward, quite simple. The next thing we look at is we want to see what the max element is. So this is also simple, get max, const. What we're doing is we're, we're returning the element in the uh, second element in the vector or the element in index one. As you can see here, the index zero is always some garbage value. At the max, we always need to return what's here, index one. Now we need to focus on inserting an item. So insert item. We are going to be giving this item a, a value. So we're going to be inserting an item with the value. And in order to insert, we need to do, perform an operation called shift up that takes the index of the item we are inserting. The next thing we need to be able to do is we need to be able to pop out this one, get rid of this one. How are we getting rid of it? Well, what we're doing is we're deleting this 100 by sh taking this 100 and shift and putting it where the smallest element in our um, max heap is. So we'd be replacing it with the smallest element. And then we'd be swapping the two. We'd be swapping this element with the smallest element. And then we'd be taking the smallest element that's now here, let's say it's one, and we'd be pushing it down the max heap until it arrives at its uh, proper position. So that's what we'd be doing. So we're gonna call that function, the one that actually gets rid of the max element as uh, extract element or extract max. And it's going to return an int. It's actually going to return to us our 100 before getting rid of it, just for clarity. Now as part of this extract max, we're also gonna have another void function called shift down, which I'll explain as well. And it takes the uh, integer index. All right, now that we have this, we can start. We are going to start with our insert max function. So let's do that. Void max heap insert max heap insert item give it a value. Okay, so when are we going to insert an item? Well, we're going to insert an item if the size of our max heap plus one is greater or equal to the size of our vector. The size of our vector, um, yeah, it's greater or equal to the size of our vector. Okay, now, if that's the case, then what we wanna do is we wanna push back a placeholder first. So we're gonna take vect, and we're gonna push back a placeholder of zero. Now, how do we fill in this placeholder? Well, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone here. We're gonna take the vect, we're going to increment its size because we are adding an item, and we're going to also add this item exactly where this zero was pushed back to. The zero will be pushed back at the end. We have to increment the size of our max heap because we're adding an item, but at the same time, we wanna assign the last element this value. So that's exactly what we do here. The next thing we have to do is we have to do a shift up operation that takes this element that we put at the back and we have to shift it up to its proper position. So where is this element? Where this element is at position size. And the last thing we need to do is simply return. Awesome. Now let's build this shift up function. So for shift up, I have a feeling this might be a little confusing for some people, but I think I can explain it such that it isn't too confusing. So we have a shift up, right? What does shift up take? It takes the index of the item we just added. 
And why is Val not liking me here? Val is unidentified. Uh, uh, insert item int val. Why are you unidentified? Okay. I'll get back to this in val. Um, oh, this is bugging me now. Huh. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's just because my shift up function is not complete uh, above it. Okay, so for shift up, we're going to take an index i, which is the index of the position that we just added. So index i. Now, what's interesting is what we're about to do. Okay, so we know that if this index i is greater than the size of our max heap, well, then we need to return. We need to return because somebody's trying to play something, uh, somebody's trying to shift up an index that doesn't exist. Um, he's saying we have an, a ninth number that we want to shift up, and in reality, we only have six numbers in the max heap. Okay, the next thing we want to do, which you'll understand soon, is at index i, if it equals one, we want to return. The reason this is the case is because of recursion, and I'll explain that in a second. The next thing we want to do is if we have a vector at index i that is greater than its parent vector, and this is where our private helper function comes in handy, this will give us the index of its parent, then we want to swap the parent vector, which is smaller than the one, the um, than its child, with the child that's bigger than it. Because right, it's a max heap. We want the max number closer to the top. Awesome. Now what we want to do is we want to keep recursing. So we do shift up, and we actually take the parent index. So we move the parent. Let's say the parent was uh, smaller than its child, we'd swap them, and then we would perform the same operation um, at the index of its parent to check if the parent's parent is greater or smaller than the parent. Now, when do we return from this recursion? Well, when we get to the top. So when we get to index number one, the second element, we'd like to return from this recursion. Hence, when i equals one, return. And i will always eventually equal one, because if you do integer, integer division with the number two, you'll eventually get a number that floors or that becomes one. So even if you do five divided by two, that you get 2.5, that rounds to two, and then you do two divided by two, you will get one eventually in every single case. Awesome. Now we can implement our void max heap. Um, extract max. And in order to do that, we actually also need to do a shift down operation. Okay, so this shift down operation, let's begin with it. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we know we have kind of the same condition here. If i is greater than size, we need to return. Doesn't work for us. Now, what we want to do is we want to set a swap ID. The reason we want to set a swap ID is because instead of looking at the parent and comparing one item to another, child to parent, we want to be comparing parent to two children. So we want to be able to track the comparison between an item and two other items. So we need more than one variable. We need a swap ID, which will be set to I. Now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, if the left child, right, we're looking at the children now, we're taking the parent and moving it down, is less than or equal to size, meaning that it exists, and vector I is less than vector LI, so the left child is actually greater than the um, current parent, then we want to move, we want to make that swap. So what we will do is we will set the swap ID equal to I. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to check the right child. So we'd say if our I is less than or equal to size, and vect swap ID, not I anymore, swap ID is less than uh, Vect right child. 
Now, why are we using swap ID here instead of I? Well, imagine this. Let's say you have a parent that is smaller than its left child. We would initially think that we'd like to swap the left with the parent. But what if the right child is actually bigger than the left child? Then we don't want to swap the left child with the parent. We want to swap the right child with the parent. Hence, we would have here that our swap ID is equal to the right child. Sorry, this is not, this is not child. Swap ID is equal to our, our right child. Awesome. So we want to keep recursing, as we know, because we want this to build itself. We want all the positions to fall in line, per se. So what we would need to do is we would now have to say, OK, if when, when, when will we stop this recursion? Well, we know we want to stop when the swap ID, when what we need to swap is, to, is the same as our i, meaning that we'd have to continue this recursion as long as we have two things that we need to swap. We have an, an i, we have this parent, and one of its children is different than its parent. That means we have to continue this swap. So what we do is we say we're going to swap vect i, the parent, with vect swap id, which is one of its children. And then we want to keep shifting down. So we'd want to recurse down again. But we don't recurse to a parent like we did previously. Well, remember, we're going down. So we recur to the child that we swap, the index of the child that we swap, which is swap id. Awesome. Now here we are getting a, oh, my bad, forgot my if statement. Okay. Now if this isn't the case, then we'd like to return. Awesome. Now we can actually get do extract max. So what we want when we extract max, oh, it's in, we first return, well, our return value will be the maximum that we extracted. So let's say um, max number, vect one, we will eventually want to return this max number. But here we want to swap vect one with vect size. So vect size is the last number. And like I said before, the last number will be the minimum number and we want to swap the min with the max and then shift down. So here we swap the min and the max. And because we're extracting the maximum, we're getting rid of a number, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do size minus minus. So this will first take the last uh, element that we can take. And after it does so and does a swap, it will de decrement um, size by one. Awesome. And now we're going to shift down. Now where are we going to shift down from? So we swapped the smallest and the biggest, and we want to shift down from the smallest at position one. Shift down one. All right, and this in fact should be our max heap. I hope that was clear enough. Now we're going to actually show the implementation of the max heap or show it in action. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a priority queue. So a max heap pointer to something we're gonna call priority queue, which is just an implementation of max heap. So new max heap. Now what we're going to do is let's make sure that our max priority queue is actually empty. Let's test that empty feature. So priority queue is empty. If it's empty, then we want to get, yes, this is the correct answer. It'll default to true, and we want to signal that we have hit the correct answer. Else, uh, we have a problem with our is empty function, right? If this, in fact, is working, when the priority queue is first created, it should be created with a size of zero. This is the same as doing zero. And as well, because it is empty, we should get a message that prompts us, yes, it is in fact empty. If it's not empty, then we have a problem because our function isn't working. Now let's do a bunch of inserts, insert items. 10, and in no random or in no particular order. Insert item, this is gonna be our largest item, 120. Uh, priority queue, insert item 34, priority queue, insert item 41, priority queue, insert item 5. Awesome. 
Now what we're going to do is we are going to get our max item. We are going to now get rid or extract max. Now if we wanted to, we can send this to C out, which would actually return us our max value, right? Because over here, max extract max actually not only replaces the min and the max and fixes the max heap, but also returns us our max number. So we can actually do C out if we wanted to, to see what our max number that's being removed is, but we don't need to because we're going to see what the max number is right after we extract the max number. That's a mouthful. So and line. And now we're also going to make sure that our priority queue isn't empty. So what we're going to say is, if priority queue is empty, this should be false. So this should say, correct answer, priority. Uh, okay, let's just copy this. And here, we have a problem. All right, so now is kind of the moment of truth. Let's compile this. Ah, yeah, I have random numbers here that shouldn't be there. And I did forget a semicolon. Thank you, compiler. So now let's compile this. So before I run it, what we should expect is a max heap that the get max is 120. We remove the get max, and then the next maximum is 41. So let's take a look. Yes, this is correct answer, perfect, it's empty. 120 is our max, we remove the max, we get 41 as the next max after the shifts, uh, kind of the rebalancing of the max heap. And then once again, the priority queue is not empty. We get, yes, this is, this is the correct answer. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you learned a lot from this. Once again, a lot of tutorials online that throw code on the screen, don't explain anything, no theory, nothing. And this is my first tutorial video. If you liked it, thumbs up, share, put a comment, share it with your friends, and tell me if you'd like more of these videos uh, about data structures or about questions you have um, related to C++. So thanks for listening, and uh, I guess I'll see you in any next video I have.